Hi, um, I'm talking to you today about media distortions of reality and how that affects our perceptions of the real world. Um, there was a movie by uh, a young man uh, called Super Size Me in which he goes to McDonald's and lives exclusively on McDonald's food for an entire month. And you watch him bloat up, become grotesquely fat, uh, his cholesterol count uh, soars, his doctor says, <coughs> you have to stop this. His liver enzymes are um, completely out of whack, and uh, he wanted to go for a whole month, and he barely made it. The purpose of the movie is to dis describe the dangers of, of junk food and of advertising. So there's one scene in the movie that intrigued me, and it was, he goes to an elementary school and he shows children a picture of uh, George Washington. It says, who is this person? They don't know. Shows them a picture of George Bush, maybe one or two out of 30 knew. Jesus Christ, nothing, okay? But then he shows them a picture of Ronald McDonald, and everybody knew who Ronald was. And it was appalling, in a way, because children are absorbing almost 40,000 television commercials a year, and you wonder, what's inside their head? Okay? Uh, it's sugar uh, avatars and cartoon characters and jingles, and uh, their perception of the real world is a little bit distorted. I'm consider I would say considerably distorted by media and advertising. Now, you would say, well, okay, they're just children. Leave them alone. Okay, but I think the very same process uh, happens to us, and that's what this video is about. It's a short video, but I want to ask you two questions. Who is this person? Have you ever seen this person before? What is this person's name, and what do they do? Okay, next question, and the last question. Who is that person? What is that person's name, and what do they do? All right, let's hope you got, I, I, I predict you have this one and you don't have the first one. I'm going to send you my email, so you let me know how you score. Uh, this is Kofi Annan, the Secretary General of the United Nations. And the previous gentleman is Ban Ki-moon, who is the Secretary General of the United Nations and has been for the last two years. Except that you know Kofi Annan, generally, and you hardly even know the name of that other guy. Why is it that you don't know him? Well, is it that we're biased against Asians? I don't think that's the reason. We are telegenically biased. Mr. Moon does not make a great television appearance. And if you're the executive producer of Wolf Blitzer, you say, are we going to run Mr. Moon talking again? Here's Mr. Moon talking. For your big turnout, and I thank uh, the Whit Clinton High School Choir for beautiful song. Okay, uh, compare his accent and television presence with Kofi Annan. In this warm applause, I wonder why I spend so much time on the other side of the Atlantic. <laughs> Kofi Annan had uh, a certain charisma. He had television presence. He knew how to use a microphone. He had an engaging accent. And, um, okay. Do you have to be a... St if you, I mean, if you're the Secretary General of the United Nations, it seems that it doesn't matter if you're telegenic or not. You need to speak to the world about humanitarian crises, about the swine flu epidemic. Why is it that we don't know this other guy? Well, the reason we don't is precisely that. He is boring, okay? And if you're the executive producer of the Brian Will, Wilson or Williams uh, television show, his news broadcast, uh, you say, well, we have two million people watching us. We want to go hit three million. We want to hit four million. We need to increase our, our viewer, our market share, our uh, advertising base, our bottom line. So what stories are we going to put on TV today? What kind of news? We have a story of Mr. Boone talking about the swine flu epidemic. We have a story of a pig in, in Virginia who can skateboard. Hmm. What story do you want to put on tonight? 
Well, there's a there's a story of a helicopter crash in Belgium with nine EU soldiers on it versus a sex slave in Northern California. Let's go with the sex slave. Let's go with the pig. And that's what's been going on in tabloid news. I'm not talking about the National Enquirer. Take a look back to Kofi Annan. This is Kofi Annan's uh, a number of appearances on primetime news broadcasts in a 365-day period. He appeared almost 80, 90 times. Ban Ki-moon, in a similar 365-day period, got on TV news about nine times. That's a 10 to 1 ratio. Now, they have both had the same job. They, you would imagine that they would be on television an equal amount. And they're not. And I suggest that they're not because Mr. Moon is not sexy enough to attract... To, uh, the purpose of the news, after all, is really to sell you chicken sandwiches and hemorrhoid medicine and Plavix. That's the purpose. If they have fewer viewers, they have a le uh, commercials that are not paying as much money, and the bottom line suffers. Now, ultimately, what suffers is the American sense of reality, because this is tabloid entertainment news, and it is far more prevalent than we know. Here's a story. In the Congo, between 1998 and 2007, 5.4 million people died. There were military conflicts, there were skirmishes, there were wars, there was civil war, there was a collapsed state, there were refugees, there were famines. All together, 5.4 million people died. And one man said, in terms of fatalities, this surpasses any other conflict since World War II. This story is bigger than the Vietnam War, bigger than the Korean War, bigger than uh, the Iraq War, bigger than the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan. And I suggest to you, <coughs> we know virtually nothing about it. I would say the average American doesn't even know there was a problem. Let's be honest with ourselves. Can you name a city in the Congo? Can you name the president of the country at any time during this period, from 1998 to 2007? Could you name any of the belligerents? Who was fighting? Were, was this Al-Qaeda? Were these Islamic fundamentalists? Were these Maoists, communists? Were these drug lords? Was the Congo invaded by a neighbor like Uganda? I don't think we have the answers to any of those questions. This is the biggest human tragedy since World War II, and our knowledge of it is ridiculously small. And that's not our fault. That's the same. This story is just like Mr. Moon. It doesn't get on TV because there's a pig who can, who can skateboard in Virginia. And that story gets on more. Michael Jackson, during this same eight-year period, was on the national news, not on Inside Edition, but on uh, Katie Couric and uh, Ted Koppel. He was on the news three times more than this story. So I'm going to ask you a question. Do you know Michael Jackson's sister's name? Bet you do. Uh, did you ever hear of the Neverland Ranch? I bet you did. You know much more about Michael Jackson than you know about this. And that's the point. People who are giving us the news on television are ultimately trying to sell us chicken sandwiches and uh, Plavix and Claritin or whatever. They're, they're, in, they're, they're selling their wares, and the, the price that we pay for this tabloid, up, up, allegedly objective news is that we are losing contact with reality. Thanks for watching.